So here I want to factorise quadratics, but not puny quadratics like 2x squared minus 15x minus 8, for instance, where the factors are obvious in that it can only be a 2x times an x that produces the 2x squared, and the 8 can only have come from a 1 and an 8 or a 2 and a 4. And given that, the middle for the middle term, I want a difference of 15, and whichever occupies this space will be doubled. It would have to be the 8 that goes there and the 1 that goes there. 16 take away the 1. The negative would go to the larger of the inner and the outer. And that says that the signs must be opposite for the N2. No, that takes no thought at all. Even if it was dressed up a little bit like 2x squared minus 15xy minus 8y squared, just introducing another variable, because that makes absolutely no difference. The only thing that matters are those numbers, not where the variables are positioned. No, not that. Or even a pretender for a beefed up quadratic, something like this. 23x squared plus 249x minus 44 which might on the surface look a little bit more formidable, but it's just as harmless as the other ones because I've got a prime number for one of my outer coefficients. And a prime number can only result in that 23 times itself. Yes, there's a 44 to factorise, but that's only going to be either 1 times 44, 2 times 22, or 4 times 11. Whichever ones occupies this space will get multiplied by 23. Well, that's round about 230. I'm looking for a 10. It must be the 11. That's a 4. This took no thought at all either. The middle term was positive, so I'll give that to the greater one. And that says they must be opposite again, so that would be the factorisation. No, that's nothing. There you go. No, you want to be able to factorise something entirely more beefy than those. I want to factorise some steroid quadratics with some substance to them. Here's a simple little one. This is hardly a steroid one, but at least it doesn't fall into that simple category of one where I've got a prime at either of the end coefficients. So once there's no longer prime numbers at the ends, a little more thought has to come into it. And in a case like that, We'll simply investigate the inner workings of the quadratic and its factorising. Well, if that were to factorise, it would end up looking something like this. The product of two linear terms, and I'll just use A, B, C and D to stand for those numbers. If I multiply that back out, I'll be able to identify the parts with the three coefficients. Multiplying that out will give me, for the x squared term, A, C, for the numerical term, plus BD. And for the term in the middle, I'll have to use the mixtures, the products involving just a number and a single X, which would be AD lots of X and BC lots of X. That would be the factorization of this, so it's just a case of identifying those parts. And then noticing the factors that form the two end terms get shuffled to make the numbers that would add for the middle term. So that in particular, if I take the factorisation of the two end terms and put them together, AC, BD, not necessarily multiplying them, there's absolutely no need to multiply them, because what I'm interested in are their bits and pieces. I'm interested in the factors. Because what happens with these two terms is they're going to exchange factors to produce two terms which will add or subtract to give the middle one. There's going to be an interchange of factors so that it end up with AD and the BC. Then once I've got those two, once I've interchanged the factors, then how can I separate out my A's and B's and C's and D's? which have been jumbled up in here, quite simply by dividing by the end term. If you take the end term, I'll put it back over here, I've got AD divided by the end term BD, that will leave me the ratio A to B. BC divided by the end term BD, the B's will cancel out, leaving me the ratio C to D, which will then form these two brackets. AB would multiply out 
would separate out rather to AX plus B. The signs, of course, are sorted later. And C and D would sort out to CX plus D. That would be the pattern then to factorise quadratics with much larger numbers here. So we'll try it with this one in particular then. So here's a note of this interchange of factors at the side. How would you use it here? Well, the first step is I'll take these two terms down together, but I'm not going to multiply them. There's no point multiplying those two together to get 216 and then try and figure out the two numbers that multiply to give 216 and differ by 19. No, I'll look inside the numbers to see their factors because it's the factors that are going to exchange. 6 is made up of, if I take that down, a 2 times a 3. 36, now I really want the prime numbers, the prime factorizations, but I don't want the individual powers. It'll be sufficient to take out all the four, all the 2s and all the 3s and so on. That's 4 times 9, rather than seeing 2 to the power 2 and 3 to the power 2. There's the factors, now they just need to swap. Now, it could be that I need to break the 9s, could be that I need to break the 4s. But this number will give you the clue here. The fact that that number doesn't divide by 2 means that these numbers can't share a factor of 2. What I'm using there is the contrapositive. There's no point saying, oh, this might divide by something. If that middle number had been an 18, and you could say, ah, that divides by 2. That doesn't mean that the two numbers I'm going to add together to make it need to divide by 2. I could have 7 and 11. It doesn't work that way necessarily. It might be a clue in some cases. But what is true is this. If that doesn't divide by 2, then they can't divide by 2. Because the original division would be, if two terms share a common factor, then the sum of them must have that common factor. So if they both divide by 2, then this would have to divide by 2. Using the contrapositive, if that doesn't divide by 2, they can't divide by 2, so all the 2s will have to go to one side. It's just a case of which side will I put it to. I'll put it together on this side, so that's got the 8. So I've now got 8 times 3 and a 9 on this side. But then again, this doesn't divide by 3, so they can't share a common factor of 3, which means that 3 will have to go to one side. So I'll have to go over there and make that 27. And then there's no more swap can take place because I've only got two factors. I've got an 8 and I've got a 27. I was looking for a difference of 19. I should take a note of that at the beginning. And I've got a difference of 19. That must be the factorization. So what were the two parts? Divide by the 36. Better than that, divide by its factorization. 4 times 9, 4 times 9. That cancels that down to 2 over 9. That cancels that down to 3 upon 4. So my factors must have been 2x9, 3x4. Rather than playing with the signs in here, I can just go back up to the top here. Because that says the larger of them must have a negative. And the larger of them is the 27, so that gets the negative. If the end term is negative, they must have opposite signs, so that must be a plus, and that's the factorisation done. Now for a bigger one. What about 84x squared plus 241x minus 198? Factorise that. Of course, this is only something that you might want to do in a competition because obviously you can buy a little calculator that will have a function on it that will factorise your quadratics for you. No, this is for factorising by hand. So, what are the factors then of 84? Well, that's 12 times 7, so that'll be 3 times 4 times 7. That'll come down to 3 times 4 times 7, leaving all the powers of 2 together for the moment. It might need splitting up, they might stay together. That's definitely 11. 11 times 18. 1 and 8 makes 9. So it's 11 times 18, that's 2 times 9 times 11. These are the two numbers I've got so far, and I want to interchange their factors so that I've got a difference of 241. First thing I'll look at is what this doesn't divide by, because then they can't share it. That's not even, so the 2s will have to go to one side. It's really just eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Maybe I'll put them over here. So I've got 3 times 8 times 7, and I'm just left with the 9 times 11. Again, I've got 3s and 9s. That doesn't divide by 3, so they can't share a 3. So I've got 8 times 7, and I'll just have to put the 3s together now, because they'll have to stay on one side together. That's 29, sorry, 27 
times 11 and then it's just a case of there's hardly left, anything left to interchange if in fact they need to be interchanged because it looks pretty close the way it is I've got a difference of 241 that ends in a 6, that ends in a 7 that's the right size 11 times that, 287 56 away from that, 241 that's the answer then that was it done how can I put that back then? Now that I've successfully swapped them, and there wasn't much swapping, a two went over that way and a three went over that way, was all the interchange that was needed. How can I get back to my original values that I want? Divide by the end term, divide by 198, but obviously not 198, divide by its factors. So divide by two times nine times 11, and divide by two times nine times 11, because that way they'll cancel out. That will cancel down to a 4, that will cancel that down to a 3, so all I'm left with is a 28 over a 99, and a, thir oops, and a 3 over a 2, that was silly, and there's my two factors. So I've got 3x and 2, I think I'll put that first, and I've got 28x and 99. But I want the bigger of the products to be positive. So the outer one will have to be positive. This says they have to be opposite signs at the end to multiply to give a negative. So there's my factorisation. Now let's go for a real big one for you to try. How about 1155x squared minus 1457x plus 340. Have a try at that. Well, here's what I would have done. Use the factors. I want to factorise this. That's quite a good one actually there because that obviously divides by 11. So I've got 11 in it and it would be 11 times 105. And 105 is going to be 753. Or I could have started with saying 5 goes into it and 3 goes into it. So I've got 3 times a 5 times a 7 times an 11 to make that. For this one here, obviously 2 goes in and 5 goes into that, 2 goes in twice, that's going to be a 20, 20 is going to leave a 17, so I've got 4 times 5 times 17, there's the factors, it wouldn't take long to find those, so there's the factors, keeping them in their groups, well the only one that's got a group is that 2 to the power 2 there, and I just want to interchange them. Now, with 7 to play with, there could be a bit of shuffling back and forth, trying various things, but there's a couple of things of course that you're aiming for, I want my final two terms to add up to 1,457. And I want to notice what this doesn't divide by. It doesn't divide by 5, because this doesn't divide by 5. So I've got to decide which side will I put that 5 to. I'll just put it over here for the moment. So I've got 3 times 7 times 11, and 4 times 25 times 17. Well, do I need any swapping? The sizes, the sizes, this looks a little bit too big here because I've got already 100, that's 1700, so one of them can't stay, one of them's going to have to move over, so I'd probably try the 17 anyway rather than the 25. Another test would be, you know, what would the end digits be <coughs> if I was to switch it over? If I put the 17 over, I'd have 7 7s or 49, and then a 3 times that, the 9 would give me a 7 at the end. And this one here must end in a zero, so interchanging those two might work. So if the swapping takes place between the, the 17 and the 11, they now seem about the right size. There I've got 1100, and here I've got 300 odd. I'll just quickly check that. I've got 1100, and here I've got 21 times 17, so that's 340. 40 and a 17, 357, and there it is, that's it worked. So there's the rearrangement of the factors. There's the interchange of factors, it just took a few swappings. Now, what were the original t coefficients then that I've got? Divide by the end term. But of course, don't divide by the end term as such. Divide by its factors, that'll make the division much easier. So dividing both of them by 340, or rather the factorisation of 340, 4 times 5 times 17, 4 times 5 times 17. That way, they'll cancel out, and what I'm left with is 21 over 20. 
This bit cancels to a 5 and that cancels, leaving me a 55 over a 17. And there's my answer, which we're going to just keep it the way it is. So I've got 21x, 20, and 55x, 17. Last part, the negative goes to the larger, but this says they're both the same anyway. There it is. There's the factorisation, and hopefully you got that too. And now you could spend all night just making up questions for yourself like this. Just make up several brackets with horrible numbers in them. Multiply it out, and then leave it a few minutes till you've forgotten the original factorisation, and then go through this process of factorising themselves. Endless hours of fun. Put away your Pokemon. Put away your Xbox. Factorise some steroid quadratics.